to get you started, you're gonna need two to three things. First is Reactor. I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description down below. Now, once Reactor is downloaded and installed into your Division Resolve, you need to download the Echo Effect and the Colorama Effect. Now, if you're like me and you already got Reactor installed but don't know how to reopen it, I'm gonna show you that now. To get Reactor, we're going to Workspace. I'm gonna go down to Scripts, Reactor, Open Reactor. Give it a second to load. And there's it is. And basically you just type in the, the two effects I mentioned, the echo effect and the colorometer. Download them. You'll have to restart fusion. Once re fusion is restarted, you can carry on with the effect. All right, you just start with the first effect. I already got my two clips here. They're both fusion clips. The bottom clip, if you hit D to disable, is the actual background. This is my cutout clip. Go on, hit D to re-enable. Click here, we're gonna go into fusion. Now, after you got everything downloaded with the uh, reactor, you're gonna just hit control and space bar, type in echo, click and add. You already see the effect starting to take place, but you're gonna go over here, it has a set number of frames, by default is at five. You go down here to where it says end frame. You can move this uh, slide wheel up and down if you want to, or just click it just to type in 52 which is the number of frames that my particular clip end at. So if your clip ends at 60 or 70, that's the number you're typing in. If you hit play, you'll see that the effect is kind of resource heavy. So to kind of lighten the load on your PC, you can right click, turn off high quality and motion blur. If you want to as well, you can go to playback. You can drop down, the, mine's already set at quarter resolution. This will not affect the overall quality of the clip when you export it. So if you export in 4K and you still happen to leave quarter resolution on, it's still going to export in 4K. This is just what you look, what you see during your preview. And with this effect, you can also add more frames. So if you want to go, so seven, eight, let's say it's going to add more, a bit more resources. You can see more of an echo effect to it. You can also go down here to center, and you can actually move it around. So if you want to, you can actually keyframe it. So you hit double click to center it. Click here. We go to the first frame. And I'm gonna click the keyframe again, go back to this frame, roll it. And I'm gonna do this. So over time, it stretch out. Then it says go for the frame 30. Hit the keyframe. And go back to the center. I'm gonna hit right click and go to set the default. It stretches out, then go back in. You can also do the same thing with the Y axis too. So if you wanna go up and down, you can do that. You can go into apply mode and actually change from screen, change it to screen. You'll brighten her up. I don't know why would you want to do that, but hey, if you want to kind of create like a Super Saiyan Echo Glow, actually, I'm gonna let this render. Now it's rendered. You see it's a little, little glow effect. Is but just play around. No, don't, don't be afraid to mix it up. All right, this next effect, I got the subject mask. I actually use runway for this one. You can still see a little bit of the green on it, but. It's good enough for the demo. That's going to hit D on the clipboard to disable this clip so we can take the background clip into Fusion. Now in Fusion, let's say if you already downloaded the color rumbler, you're going to hit Control and Spacebar. You're actually going to type in MT. And as you see, I got a bunch of the stuff from uh, from the reactor plug in here. But the first one, well, at least first one for me is color rumbler. If not, you can hit MT underscore, then type in color. We're going to add that and it automatically change the effect it has three wheels over here these wheels are not animated by default you can change the different frequency and amplitude and so if you wanted to actually animate over time you can right click modify with Adam curve I'm gonna go over here to modifiers change from transition to duration change from linear to easing and play it back and you'll see it will change colors over time you go back into the edit page, you're gonna re-enable the original clip. So now you got this animated trippy background. Now another thing you can do is hit the, you're gonna hit disable again, go back into fusion, you're gonna hold shift and remove the colorometer. Gonna hold go back into the selected tools and we're gonna type in invert. We got inverted color, you know, hold shift, add it to the node tree. Now it just inverts your color, and these are not animatable. But animatable is it you can't animate these but you can uncheck them to get different color effects so i'm gonna do i do that now you can't animate it it just that's just what it looks like but you can also go in here and you take a mask tool or ellipse mask 
Now, if you want to actually move, have the ellipse move into a perfect circle, you can actually right click on one of the uh, width or height, go to expressions, you're gonna get to the plus sign. You take it, connect it to height, and then you just hit enter on the keyboard, and click off that, and when you move, I should get you. You like that move simultaneously. That way you have the perfect measurements. So say for instance, you want to start here, go to the first frame, click hiding with keyframes. You can go into like midway through, animate it out. Maybe go back here, drop it down. Just kind of go back and forth with it. And just get create little trippy little effects. And so you can do a soft, soften the edge. Please board with if you want to. You can do different things. Also, you can see, take this one off. Get the rectangle mask, drop it down, connect it. It's gonna increase the height and width. Try to fill up the frame, and then I'm gonna go to the first frame, key frame. I'm gonna hold control and zoom out. I'm gonna grab this little wheel here and just drop it down. You can go up to here and right click actually no we're just gonna drag it back up drag it up cross and yeah, drag it about yeah just drag it up here and basically it's just kind of animate over time you can go to the spline editor select the rectangle zoom to fit you can smooth out the transition i will actually select all you can smooth them out if you want to stretch out over time of course you hit the little time stretcher here you hit f4 to fill out Full screen, you can grab this here and yeah, stretch it effect out, effect out, and you'll see the keyframe move. So now it'll take a little bit longer time for it to swipe across. This is not actually an effect, this is more or less an update to the zoom through transition I did in the previous video. Now, shout out to this viewer for leaving this in the comment because I completely forgot about it. So let me show you this now. All right, so now I got my clips here. It's basically this window cut out, the little boy watching, you see it, and it zooms in. Now in my previous video, I animated, uh, let me go back. I animated this by moving the center. I'm gonna say shout out to this viewer here. And he was like, just move the pivot point. And the pivot point is a little X here. Sometimes it's hard to grab, but it's by default. It's right there, actually, let me double click here. And when it's in the default state, it's sometimes hard to grab, but I'm not having a problem with it now, but if you have a problem with it, you can just actually grab the uh, numbers here and just slide it over into this, away from this little access point here, and then just move it to where you want to. Wherever it's placed, that's actually where your effect will go to. So if you zoom in, you see now it goes straight to it without having to constantly move and keyframe the centerpiece, or the center axis, I'm sorry. Now, before we get into the final effect, I gotta give a shout out to today's sponsor, and that's you, you and that like button. So go ahead, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. We almost about to hit that, that 1,000 mark. So real quick, I'm actually editing this video and as of yesterday, we actually hit the 1,000 mark. This video was actually supposed to be out like a week ago, but life happened and unfortunately, this is not my full-time job. But one day, one day. Anyway, uh, appreciate you everybody for subscribing. Thank you, I truly appreciate it. It's gonna keep on rocking, we're gonna keep on going. Y'all finish out the video and I'll see y'all next time. And this next effect is actually a lot easier than what it looks. I got a freeze frame clip here that I turned to a fusion clip and then it just continues playing out. It's actually a transition, so it starts here. And this is the part we're actually gonna animate and then it continues playing. So we're gonna grab here, go into fusion. What you wanna do is take your media one and you wanna copy it a couple of times, maybe three to four times, depending on how many uh, pieces of the frame that you wanna animate. So this one here, I already got the mask on. You just break your polygon node. So medium one I already have masked out. Just grab your polygon node, connect it to medium one and mask it out. And if you want to, actually, I'm gonna go through here, label those and disconnect that. Connect this transform to this transform. And that's what it looks like. So that's my medium one there. It's just the head. And basically I use a transform node to animate it. So if we go back here, frame zero it's the animate zone and with this animation i actually had to change the pivot point so if you go back here as you go to this frame here frame nine where the keyframe is and double click on the pivot point you'll see it animates kind of weird I, I animated the angle so it'll rotate but it animates kind of weird because it animates on that axis so that 
Yeah, you see there. So, so they won't. So you won't, yeah. And so that you won't have a weird like rotation animation. I changed the pivot point to where it's basically like the center of her face. So about right there. So then when you animate something, it's basically her face flipping because originally it was like basically just flipping the whole frame. You basically flip in, and it places it. So first the head flips in, then starting it, leaving it off at frame thirteen. That's why I get my media one dash one and connect it to the previous transform node and got the polygon node and I animated it while well, mask out her arm. Actually, I can get rid of this merge node here. I'm gonna click on this and she's gonna get a transform node. Now you can use the merge node to animate these if you want to, but you get more control with the transform node. So you click on that, you drop down here and then you basically wanna animate that as well. I deleted it, so I had to go back ahead and reanimate it. So the previous one, the previous transform node ended at frame 13. So I'm gonna go to transform two and move it off screen. Yeah, move it off screen about right here. And then I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna hit keyframe on center. Go to about frame 16, it don't have to be that long. Then right click, set to default. And the best thing to do too, when, you, when you're on your last frame, to make sure they're all lines back together, just make sure you right click on either the center or X or Y axis, whichever axis you're moving, or even uh, the uh, angle, and right click the default. That way you know for a fact it lands back in place where it's supposed to. And then you just repeat this for each part of the body that you want to animate. Now the last one is actually going to be your background. So you're actually going to leave it alone. You're not going to mask out anything. You're going to connect it to the mer your previous merge. Now by default, as you're going to go here and get the transform node, drop it here, oh, hold shift if you need to reconnect. And we're going to move the center axis. Now by default, you see here, that's, this is the, that's the part you masked out so far with your alpha channel. And then the background channel, the background comes in on top. So basically you want to switch that around. So then click merge two and hit control T and that's going to switch it to the background. So if you move it now, it's actually the foreground in which your alpha channel is actually moving. So then you want to animate that. You can animate however you want to. I'm just going to animate it where it comes in. See about 19. I'm just going to drop it. I should double click there, drop it down. Oh, I'm going to transform it over here. There we go. I should go back into the merge, double click that, back to the transform. It's gonna drop down, there you go. Now the background drops down and go to about frame 24. Actually, I'm gonna go back to 19, click the keyframe, go to 24, then you're gonna right click, set the default. So that way at the end, once everything animates in, the background fills up the back, therefore filling in the rest of your, your frame as well. Now you notice on none of these, I actually turned on motion blur, but quick tip, just grab a random transform node, which is what I have here, transform five, and go into your settings. The thing with the way the node tree is laid out, whatever's on this, basically the main line affects everything. So effect, oh, I'm gonna actually move this up. So effectively this transform node is affecting all of this. So if you go into transform five, go into settings and turn on motion blur, they'll give you a motion blur that you need for your effect, but it's also less resource heavy versus if you turned on motion blur for each one of these individual transforms. So that's basically be four different motion blurs that your computer is trying to process. And I'm guessing you want to keep your computer around for the long term. So if you don't want it to blow up, this is a quick look tip. I actually place the trans transition basically i got the, the clip right here and like i said just animates in background comes up and then goes into the rest of the song and that's going to do it for this video i appreciate you watching i got a playlist right here with all my previous music video effects go ahead and check that out get caught up if you hadn't already and i see y'all next time i appreciate it